Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> Yahshua saves. Shalom, everyone. It's good to see you here this evening. We're grateful for each of you who are in attendance for the study. And I want to say shalom to each one of you who are with us by live stream. The Almighty is good. Scripture tells us that his mercies endure forever and is truth to every generation. I bless the Most High for the Scripture, the power of the Word, and I'm thankful that the Word was sent to us to make us whole, to give us healing. When we read the Scripture, we find in the Scripture that it teaches us that His Word is life to our bones and healing to all our flesh. That's powerful. <coughs> that is powerful. That it is life and healing to all of our flesh. Amen. So I'm so grateful for the power of the word, the power of the scriptures, the power of the commandment, the power of, of what the Almighty has given to us. So oftentimes, believers feel like they've got to go and run here, run there, or somebody's in town preaching, and they have gifts and signs and wonders in their life, and they figure, well, let me go to this meeting so I can get my healing, get my this, get my that, mm -hmm. without realizing that all that you need is in the Word. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. All that you need is in the Word. What we have to learn how to do is trust Him. What we have to learn how to do is believe on Him. You know, I recall men who have been used in healing ministries such as Oral Roberts, yep. Kenneth Hagin, who's passed, different ones who who are part of what you would call the faith movement. Somebody might be saying, well, they're not messianic. No <laughs> matter whether they're messianic or not, they're used by the spirit of Yah in their time and in their generation based upon what they understood. But the testimonies of these men were that they were healed by believing the scripture. Right. They took the scripture at face value regarding healing. And against all odds, against what everybody else was saying, they began speaking what the scriptures said. By his stripes, I am healed. Mm -hmm. By his stripes, I am healed. Yeah. Himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. And with his stripes, I was healed. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And the Most High healed them. They weren't in a prayer line. <laughs> I'm not saying that that don't work. <laughs> Everything has its place and in its time. But what I am saying, Zion, is that we have to learn how to trust the word of Elohim. Because this word of Elohim has been established within a covenant framework. This is what many of us in Zion miss. We miss the fact that within this covenant framework, the Almighty has obligated himself to work on our behalf as we walk in obedience in our trusting of him. So this is very, very important. Be encouraged with that. It's so important that we learn how to trust Elohim and speak the scripture over our lives. And you, you'll always hear me saying this, uh, Zion, to speak the scripture over your lives. Say what the scriptures say. 
so that you have the benefits. Now, tonight I want to um, share with you on the topic of the talit. Hmm. It's been a long time since I have addressed the issue of the talit. Um, being a Messianic Israelite and wearing tzitzit and having a tzitzit that I wear, sometimes it almost seems as though nothing needs to be said about this topic yes. because those of us who are in the know, if I could use that term, with reference to the Messianic Israelite life, <clears throat> wear tzitzit, and they also wear the talit. But I find that it is important to say something about it. I, I think that um, there's some clarity that needs to be brought to the understanding of the wearing of the tulip, the zitzit, the purpose. Because as we see the development of a Messianic Israelite community that's developing in a variety of different forms because there are differing assemblies and groups that have differing views about different things. This particular subject, I believe, needs to be talked about. Mm. Now, um, before we dive into it, let's have a short word of prayer, and then I want to um, discuss some things. Father, we do thank you tonight for your mercies and your kindness. Yes. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are our Elohim who guides and who directs us and that you teach us of your ways. We <laughs> praise you, Father, for the word, for the commandment that you've given to us so that we might do those things that please you and also rightly represent you. Now, Abba, be glorified in this teaching today. I pray that those who are in attendance may be edified by it and that your great name will be exalted. We thank you now in the mighty name of Yahshua. Amen. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I want to um, say something about presently how the zit zit are uh, used mm -hmm. and how in one group they have a particular perspective which may be different from another. And so I want to address that first. Um, for those who may be familiar with the rise of Messianic Israelite communities primarily within those who would call themselves Black Hebrew Israelites, yes. which are my brothers. Mm. I call my brothers. Anyone in the Messiah, I call my brother. Whether they may have different views on a particular issue or not, everyone who's in the Mashiach is my brother or sister. Same with those who may be from the more prominent Ashkenazi, Messianic, uh, Rabbinic Jewish framework. They are my brothers, my sisters, mm -hmm. even though I may have differences of opinion that are non-Rabbinic. But in looking at the Tulit and Zitzi, 
Mm. Within the framework of one particular group, I noticed that they are teaching that with the wearing of the zizi, that it is to be designed in such a way where there are fringes all around the base of the shirt yes. and then a blue ribbon that is sewn around the top of the border. And the manner in which the scriptures are interpreted by them as they present this particular design is not according to what the text in the Hebrew actually describes. Mm. And so I want to take some time to go over the passages of scripture that commands us about wearing the zitzits. And we want to look at certain particular terms. Okay. okay? This is very important. Um, for those who do not feel that it is important to examine scripture based upon the original Hebrew text of the scripture, they, they tend to go down a path that presents error and does not rightly represent the more accurate picture, the more accurate perspective and concept that we would get when we see it from the Hebrew language. So what I want to do, I want us to look at um, Devarim chapter 22, verse 12. I want to talk about the tassels first before I start to talk about what we call the talit. I want to talk about the tassels first because this is what we, what we see noted in the scriptures. When we look at... Um, Devarim chapter 22, verse 12, it says, make tassels on the four corners of the cloak you wear. Now, notice here, it says you make these tassels. And there are two words that are used in the Hebrew. One is called zitzi, one is called gedalim. All right? Uh, the word gedalim in, in a particular passage is describing the zitzi as chains. And zitzi, where it's noted as zitzi, that's just a term that means a tassel. All right? Now, in this passage, what I want us to look at is where it says, on the four corners of the cloak you wear. Now, looking at this phrase, the four corners, some have interpreted the word corner as a border, which means that it could be interpreted as a border that goes all the way around. But the Hebrew word that's been translated corners, in this particular, is in the plural, corners, all right? I want you to underline that word there, where it has the word corners right there. It's a Hebrew word which is called kanafot, kanafot, kanafot. okay? Now, the word kanafot, it's a plural word. It's a plural 
feminine ending. Anytime you hear a word and it has the alt on the end, it's a plural feminine ending. And you've heard me mention sometimes when we're talking about uh, plural masculine endings, it will have the em on the end of the word which is the Yod Mem. All right? Now, this word, Kanafot, plural word, it literally means a wing. You know, a wing of a bird? Yes, sir. And it gives the idea of something that is a angled type of picture. Mm -hmm. A wing, you know, like the bird has the wings. Yes, sir. And you have that part of the wing, the end here, and the other part that's bent. You know, y'all know about chicken wings, right? How many y'all eat chicken wings? I think everybody, <laughs> everybody eat chicken wings, right? You, if you take that chicken wing, you have that part of it right here that you bend up, right? It has that angle, right? Yeah. That's a wing, okay? So when you, when you see this word corner in the scripture, it is not referring to a straight line border. You, you follow? Yes. See, when we look at English words in the scripture, we see the word corners. And in some, some translations, you might see where it says the borders because a corner could refer to an edge of something. All right. Well, when you're using English words that 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 uh, uh, is similar to another English word, then you begin to interchange those words without taking into consideration that the Hebrew term does not reflect anything that is a straight line border. It reflects a wing. Everybody catch that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A wing. Y'all see? Y'all know what a wing is, right? Yes. I gave you the diagram. A wing. So it's something that has a corner in the sense of the corner of some type of a figure that has sides. All right? Like a square, triangle, something like that. That kind of a corner is what's described by kanaf. Kanaf is the singular word for wing. Kanafot means wings. So what we're seeing from the Hebrew language here, just by looking at the term kanafot, and then knowing that there are to be tassels that are to be placed on four wings or four angled corners, the image and the picture that we get in our minds is that a rectangular cloth of some type is what the tassels are going to be attached to. <clears throat> you see that? Yes, yes. Because it says what? Make tassels <laughs> On the four wings. Y'all got that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That makes sense to everybody. Okay? On the wings. Not the base borderline. Not a whole lot of tassels. Just all around the base. Circular. It's very specific. The Hebrew word shows us a picture of a cloth or a garment that has four corners, wings on each side. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm trying to really paint this picture so that we're able to see what description we get from the Hebrew. All right? This is important. Now, if the Hebrew gave us a picture of something that was just a straight line border, that'd be a whole different thing. But when you look into the Hebrew, it's already telling you it's going to be attached to something 
that is a rectangular piece of cloth. And that at each corner, in the sense of the corner looking like this, y'all got it? Yes, sir. The tassel would be placed. And it is from this language that we get this thing. On this corner, this is the wing right here. See this? Yes. This is the wing. The tassel is put on the wing. Mm. The reason why it is, is because the text of the scripture describes it as such. Yes, Everybody got that? Yes, you all know what a kanaf, kanafot is? You catch that? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is important for us to know. This is why it's important that when we deal with scripture, we need to understand the Hebrew meaning of the terms. Because the Hebrew meaning of the terms, it gives us the picture when we understand the language. All right? This is like why, <clears throat> you know how in the scripture where, where it talks about um, the, uh, 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 our, our uh, uh, Elohim, having healing in his wings. Y'all oh, yes. know that passage of scripture where it talks about healing in his wings? Yes. Really the description is giving is of our Elohim wearing a talit. That's the picture that is given. But there are other passages that talks about that Elohim has a garment or has light, wears light as a garment, which also reflects the fact that he himself Wears a tulip. Yes, but I'm going a little bit ahead of myself. All right. So, so what we see here is that a commandment is given about wearing zitzit. The focus is the zitzit, mind you, and um, the zitzit is to be put on the four corners of the cloak you wear. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. When the scripture uses the term garment, mantle, cloak, depending on what translation you use, what it's referring to is a rectangular overgarment, which is what was worn in the ancient time to keep people warm. Think of it like a poncho. How many of y'all familiar with, with poncho? So, you know, you kind of put the poncho, you know. But the cloak, mantle, talit, talit is the garment itself. That's mm -hmm. this, the garment part. The term talit just simply means a covering. Yes. And it's been described as a mantle, cloak or garment. So what I want to do right now, I want us to look at another passage of scripture over in the book of Numbers chapter 15 verse 37 through 39. Numbers chapter 15, verse 37 through 39. Everybody got it? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, Throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at, and so you will remember all the commands of Yahuwah, that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by going after the lust of your own hearts and eyes. 
Now, in this passage of Scripture, the Most High tells us the reason behind why these tzitzit are put on the garment. And we're given more detailed information here as well. What we're told is that this blue cord is supposed to be put on the tassel. Y'all read that? Yes, sir, yes, sir. See that? It says, with a blue cord on each tassel. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. It didn't say that the blue cord was supposed to be a ribbon that is sewn around the complete border. Y'all, you catch this? Yes, sir. The text says that the blue cord is to be on each Z. -Z. So over in Devarim chapter 22, verse 12, we're told that you're to put zitzi on the four wings or four corners of the garment. Now, here in the book of Numbers, the Midbar, what we are told is that a blue cord is to be put on each tassel. Yes. So, so from the text, what we're seeing is it doesn't say anything about putting a blue cord on the border. It says you put the cord on the tassel. So seeing that we're told and given the command that we're to put the blue cord on the tassel, here I have the zit zit right here. Yes, sir. And I make my own zit zit. I braid it. That's the way I do it. Because the text calls the zit zit refers to it also as gedalim or chains. So, you know, I, I braid it. I mean, there are a number of ways you can make the zit zit. I choose to braid it. But in the midst of all of these strings, I have the blue in here. I have the blue in here. Yes, sir. So on each one of the tassels, the blue cord is to be placed. This is what the scripture commands. Very clear. With the blue cord on each tassel. Mm -hmm. So for those who are of the opinion that in designing attire to represent wearing the tassels that you're to have fringes around the complete base of the shirt and then a blue ribbon strip sewn around the border that's not the picture that the Hebrew gives in the text of scripture I'll say it again it is not the picture that the Hebrew gives from the text of scripture. Now I've seen some where they have the uh, fringes, fringes in the sense of these here, right here, as decorative pieces all the way around, but they have the zit zit broken off on the four yes. corners. Now that satisfies the text of scripture with the zit zit being attached to the garment, the tallit. When we see the scripture and what it conveys to us, the original wearing of the zit zit was on the garment or on the tallit. And it was because that rectangular garment that the people wore during that time, it was a part of the regular clothing. And so it was most fitting to put the ZZ on. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, 
Many today, including myself, will take tzitzit and will attach it to our pants clothing and wear it without the garment. Yeah. Now, I don't have no problem with it. I, I do it. Because the focus of Elohim in giving us this command is not upon the garment, but it's on the tzitzit. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. When the Most High gave the command about the tassels or the tzitzit, the focus is on the tzitzit that it has a cord of blue in it, and it's there so we can look at it. So the purpose of the tzitzit is for us to look at so that we would have a reminder of the commandments. Now, all of this was generated because somebody broke the Sabbath. That's how all of this was generated. The backdrop of this comes from a person who was gathering branches of wood on the Sabbath. Someone saw them, went to Moshe, and said, we found this person gathering wood branches on the Sabbath. What are we supposed to do? Moshe goes and prays to the Almighty. The Almighty said, stone them. After that, after that, the Most High gives this command. He said, I want you to take zitzi or tassels. I want you to put a cord of blue on it and I want you to attach them to the four corners of the garments that you wear. Now notice it says the four corners of the cloak you wear. In other words, this was already an item that the people wore. Mm -hmm. Most I didn't say, okay, go get a cloak, go get one and then put tassels on them. You know, that's kind of what we do today because we like to be official. You know what I mean? It had to do with something that was already a part of their clothing that they wore every day. Okay? Most I said put tassels on. So in, in our day to day, when we put the ZZ on our pants, I have no issue with that. I take no issue with that. I, I, I don't I don't say that it's wrong to do that. All right? There may be some that may say, well, we think it's wrong to do that. Okay. I know that in uh, in rabbinic Judaism, there there is a undershirt that uh, Zeke Zeke will be attached to. Yes. That they will cover themselves with, mm -hmm. as not to have to wear the over garment. All right. Mm -hmm. So whatever perspective a person holds on that, that's their perspective. For me, I don't have a problem with wearing Zeke Zeke on my pants. All right, because the focus when we look at the text is on the tzitzit. The focus is not on this right here. Now, you know, some people, they get all caught up in the design of, of uh, this here. You know, they feel like, oh, you got to have it looking like this. You got to have these stripes on it and all of that. You know what I mean? I remember um, this one uh, Messianic Jewish uh, association that I had uh, thought about connecting with many years ago and um, in their uh, requirements with reference to the Talith they say that the Talith has to have blue stripes or black stripes yeah, blue stripes and black. Like this one has black stripes on it. Black stripes. Had to either have blue stripes or black stripes. And 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 then the tassels on it, because they had somewhat of a rabbinic bent. Uh, those who uh, practice rabbinic Judaism, they don't put a blue cord on the zitzi, because in their belief. They believe that since 
they don't have the dye that comes from the particular sea crustacean that they would extract the purple bluish dye from, then they do not put the blue cord on the ZZ. Okay? Now, I'm not rabbinic in my thinking. So I'm going to find the blue cord and put it on there because the Most High wanted to have that color there as a means of representing the commandments. You understand? And the reason why that blue cord is there is for many reasons. One of, one of the main reasons has to do with the fact that it reminds us that the commandments are from Elohim. And blue is a color that represents Hashemayim, the heavens. Mm -hmm. That's important to know. Another thing we believe about the commandments is that we believe that those original stone tablets were a blue sapphire. So this color blue, this color blue is significant. The Most High would have never said, put a cord of blue on it, if it wasn't significant. He was very particular. So for us, we want to make sure that that color is there because the Most High wants us to have a visual, a visual reminder that, hey, when you look at this, remember, this represents my commandments. Remember, keep my commandments. So for, for, for many of us, we put the blue cord on the tassel because we want to do our very best to follow out the representation that the Most High has given. See, for us, it's, it's that image, it's that picture that the Most High wants us to follow out, which is the reason why we do it. I mean, during that time, the only way that they extracted blue or got blue color was from a sea crustacean. That was the way they got blue. All right? It wasn't like the most I said, and you can only get the color from this particular, you know, sea crustacean to extract it from. He didn't say that. He just said, put a blue cord on there. All right? So this is what we do. Now, when we get into the scripture and we start looking at the descriptions of the Talith being worn by many either prophets or apostles, we start to discover that the Talith was indeed a part of their customary wear. Check this out. If you go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 27, here we're going to see that the prophet Samuel wore the tulip. Now remember, the Most High had already given a give commandment Put the ZZ on the cloak that you wear, right? So everybody was putting the ZZ on the cloak that they wear. That was it. They, they wore an overcloak as a part of their clothing. The ZZ was on it. That was the standard wear. So in the first century, Messiah wore one of these because it said that she touched, and I'm going to get to that, the woman who had the issue of blood, yeah, it said she touched, and in, and in the Greek, there's a particular word that is associated with the Hebrew word zitzit. The Greek word is called kraspadon in the Greek. All right? And that word means tassel. But when I get there, I'll go into more detail. What we see in 1 Samuel 15, 27, it says, as, and as Samuel turned to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt. Now, where it says skirt, that's the corner mm. of his mantle. Now, the term mantle, the word mantle, 
means cloak okay. or tallit. Anytime you see the word mantle, because it depends on what translation you have as to whether they're translated as cloak or mantle or garment. Those are all the same terms referring to the tallit. So <clears throat> it says that as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle or he grabbed the corner of his mantle and rent it or tore it. All right? And then we read over in 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 14. Now this is where King Shaul goes to the, 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 the witch at Endor. He goes to her so that he can have her to bring up Samuel's spirit because he wanted to get a word from Samuel. All right? That right there, that's in 1 Samuel um, chapter 28, verse 14. All right. Okay, and I'm going to read a few verses beforehand. And go to verse 9. So I want y'all to get the picture of it. Verse 9, and I'm reading from the Septuagint here. Verse 9 of 1 Samuel chapter 28. It says, And the woman said to him, Behold, now you know it's what Saul has done, how he has cut off those who had in them divining spirits and the wizards from the land. Why dost thou spread a snare for my life to destroy it? She didn't know this was Saul. <laughs> and Saul swore to her and said, As Yahuwah lives, no injury shall come upon you on this account. And the woman said, Whom shall I bring up to you? And he said, Bring up to me Samuel. Okay? Verse 12. And the woman saw Samuel and cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, Fear not, tell me who you have seen. And the woman said to him, I saw Elohim ascending out of the earth. Now, now this particular word, Elohim, is, is talking about like angels. It says, I saw Elohim descending out of the earth. And he said to her, what did you perceive? And she said to him, an upright man ascending out of the earth. And he was clothed with a mantle. You see that? Still talking about the tallit. See, when she saw Saul coming up, Saul is the, not Saul, but Samuel. When she saw Samuel coming up, excuse me, Samuel is described as having a mantle. In other words, still wearing his tallit. All right? So here we see the tallit noted in these two situations with reference to Samuel. He wears a tallit. Now we want to look at Eliyahu the prophet, commonly called Elijah. He wore a tallit. Most are pretty familiar with Eliyahu because as the scripture talks about Elijah's mantle, and when people preach, they 
like to use that phrase of taking someone's mantle or receiving the mantle like Elisha received from Eliyahu, you all know. They like to use that phrase, receiving someone's mantle as with reference to receiving someone's anointing. But what is being talked about here in actuality is that Eliyahu dropped down his talit for Elisha to now have. Okay. That's what it was that he dropped down. He dropped down this. All right? And, and so whatever anointing was upon Eliyahu, mm -hmm. it was now upon Elisha by virtue of it being attached to that talit that he had on him. So I want to read the scripture in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 13. It says, and it was so when Eliyahu heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle. So he took his talit and wrapped his face, all right? And went on and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What dost thou here? In other words, what are you doing here? <laughs> Elijah, Eliyahu. This is when the Most High had approached him. That's the text that's referring to when he's in the cave hiding out. All right. He wraps himself in his mantle. Or his talit. So we see Eliyahu wearing a talit. Also, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, it says, So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he, with the 12th, and Eliyahu passed by him and cast his mantle on him. So in this particular text, we see Eliyahu taking his talit and throwing it, placing it on Elisha. Same talit that has the zit seed on it. All right. So we, we see these descriptions here of the talit throughout the scriptures after the Most High gave this command. And we see how that this talit with the tzitzit on it was used in ways that had this connection with whatever anointing was on the person. All right? I'm going to read 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 8. And... Eliyahu took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither or here and there so that they too went over on dry ground. So what we see is that he takes his talit and he hits the waters with it and the waters part. So some powerful stuff is attached to this talit because of the anointing that's on this prophet. All right. Then we have another situation. Now, Elisha, the prophet, wearing the talit. He has Eliyahu's talit. This is in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Now, I'm just working my way through these scriptures because I want to show us those who wore the talit, having the zit zit on them, I want us to, to be able to see this and, and understand it. Uh, and, and for those who talk about Elijah's mantle and all of that, what, what they need to understand, for those who uh, don't know what that mantle Elijah had, that cloak that Elijah was wearing actually was, it was the tallit that had the zit seat attached to its four corners. That's what it was. Can you, repeat that? Where? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. The mantle or cloak that Eliyahu was wearing is or was the talit. 
that had the zit zit on the four corners. Yes, sir. That's that's what it that's what it was. And I'm providing this detailed description because believers who, from a Western Christian perspective, who use this phraseology of receiving the mantle. Mm. You understand? You've heard that terminology yes. before mm. when someone talks about, well, I'm going to receive uh, my spiritual father's or my spiritual mother's mantle. Because they read the scripture about Eliyahu and Elisha, how that the scripture says that the mantle of Eliyahu came down upon Elisha. The imagery in the minds of most Western thinking Christians is not a talit, because they are not told that it is a talit that has zit zit upon them. Because when we understand the image correctly, what, what happens is that we now are looking at something that while it is used in great power and demonstration and all of that, it is a representation of the covenant that Israel has with Yahuwah and the terms of the covenant being the commandments because the purpose of the tzitzit being on that over garment is so that the house of Israel would remember to keep the commandments all right does that make sense yes sir yes sir so it is from that representation and it is from that understanding that we are to now understand the concept of a mantle is the talit that is being received. Message. Not a special anointing. Okay? Amen. Because everything about the anointing and all of that that, that that we hear about described, it is all tied to being in covenant with the Almighty and maintaining a good covenant relationship with the Most High by being obedient to His commandments. Everybody catch that? Yes, sir. See, a person's anointing ain't worth a flip if they are not obedient to the Most High. Come on now. It ain't worth a flip. Just so, just so we're clear. All right, so I'm going to read uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. He took up also the mantle, or the tallit, of Eliyahu that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle, or tallit, of, of Eliyahu that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is Yahuwah Elohim of Eliyahu. And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted here and there. Yes, and man. Elisha went over. Now here's another instance where we see the Talit being worn. And it is worn by Ezra. Ezra wore to me. Ezra chapter 9, verse 3. Listen to this. And when I heard this thing, I rent or tore my garment and my mantle. You hear that? Yes, sir. The overgarment. He tore the one that was underneath it. He tore the clothes that he had and the overgarment. He said, I tore my garment and my mantle. That's the overgarment of his to leave. All right? And plucked off the hair of my head and my beard and sat down astonished. Ooh. Okay. Now this is primarily when Ezra had came back and saw the condition of the people. All right, when he came to the land and, and he's looking at the condition the people were in because you know they they had intermarried with um people who were of pagan nations. But anyway, the description that we see here in his response was that he wore a talit, mm -hmm. all right? 
Now we want to look at a passage found in Psalms, Psalm 104, verses 1 and 2. Now in Psalm 104, verses 1 and 2, in this instance, we're given a description of Yahuwah wearing a tallit of light. Listen to this. It says, praise Yahuwah, O my soul. O Yahuwah, my Elohim, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. Y'all see that? What does it say that he do? He what? Wraps himself in light as with a garment. Mm -hmm. Or to lead. So here we have a description of Yahuwah wearing a to lead. All right? Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? I gave you the visual picture. You see how we take the to lead and we wrap it around us? Yes, sir. That's what Yah does with light. It, and, and the description is so, it doesn't just say that he wraps himself in light, but it also tells you how. As with a garment, just like you wrap yourself with the tallit, the Almighty wraps himself with light. So we have here that the Almighty wears a tallit. Y'all didn't know that, did you? <laughs> wow. Yes. No. Your Elohim wears a tallit. And then what gets interesting, and I, and I said something about this, is when you think about the text of scripture where it talks about, talks about him having healing in his wings. Y'all remember that word, kind of folk? Remember that word, kind of folk? Yes. Healing in his wings. Now, now here's where the picture is very, very prophetic. Very prophetic. Healing in his wings. Now think about Hebrew thinking people. Okay. When they read that passage of scripture where it talks about healing in his wings, they know that that's something that is related to the tallit. The corners of the tallit. See, so you got to understand the corners of the tallit that have that zit zit there. Zit zit represents the commandments. To an Israelite, Keeping up the commandments is of utmost importance. Why? Because when you keep the commandments, guess what you get from keeping the commandments? Read over in Devarim chapter 28. Devarim chapter 28 says that if you keep my commandments, all these blessings shall come upon you. So to the Israelite, the keeping of the commandments means blessing, provision, needs met. Now, connecting all of that with the scriptures where it talks about healing in his wings, and all of that's tied to the talit, all right? The corner. What's what's on the wing of the tallit? The corner. The tassel. What does the tassel with the quarter blue represent? The commandments. The covenant. Come on. All of that's tied together. All of that is of significance. Now we get to Yahshua. All right. Now, Yahshua, he indirectly implied that it was common to wear tallit. Now, we've already seen a number of descriptions as we have gone through Samuel and, and the prophets and also uh, Ezra. We, we've gone through these descriptions where we, we have evidence that wearing a tallit was, was commonplace throughout the generations. We see that. All right? Mm -hmm. Other than the commandment that was given that tells us that the tassel was to be put on the four corners of the cloak. 
But we see here Messiah himself, he indirectly uh, implied that it was common to wear a tallit. We see this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. And, and this is what it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, where Messiah is giving his teachings uh, and, and he makes this statement. He says, if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, he says, let him have your cloak as well, mm -hmm. referring to your mm -hmm. overgarment, your tallit. He said, give him that too. Mm -hmm. So we see here that the Messiah, he implied directly, indirectly that, you know, that, that was customary wear. All right. And then he makes a statement again over in Matthew chapter 24, verse 18. Now look at this in Matthew chapter 24, verse 18. We see another place where it talks about the Talib. Check it out. It says, let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. <laughs> now in Matthew chapter 24, when he's given this description, he's talking about the situation that comes up when um, Jerusalem is going to be attacked with armies. In particular, when Rome comes, he had prophesied how that uh, Rome was going to come. He prophesied about how the temple was going to be destroyed. And he said, when these things happen, when you see this stuff going on, he said, leave, get out of Jerusalem. And then he says, let no one who is in the field go back to get his, his tallit, his cloak. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't get it, leave it. Get out of Jerusalem. So he, he makes a reference here about the tallit, all right? But now we see Mashiach wearing a tallit also. All right? And here's, here's the situation where a woman has an issue of blood. She had a blood flow problem. She was continuously menstruating. And the text says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 through 21, it says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Now I'm reading this from King James Version. Okay? And I'm reading this from King James Version purposefully. It's purposeful that I'm doing this. Okay? And the reason why is because when the King James Version was translated, here is a place where you can see that there was some purposeful hiding. Now, this is my opinion. This is how I see it. That there was some purposeful hiding of the Hebraic culture. Because in this text, it says that the woman touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Now, we know that when we look at this scripture text, this is in the writings of the apostles. And uh, in the Western Christian world, the Greek text of the writing of the apostles yeah. is what's been used. All right. Yeah. So in looking at the Greek text, the word that's used that's been translated him, you know where it says the hem of his garment, is this word called craspedon. Now when you and I hear the word hem, the first thing we're thinking about is the bottom border of whatever clothes we're wearing, whether it's our pants or whether it's, uh, if it's a woman wearing a dress, the hem would be the, the, the cuffed border around that skirt. All right. If it's a robe, it's the bottom cuffed border, right? Yes, That's yes. what a person thinks about when they hear the word him. Yes, yes. You don't think tassel when you hear the word him. That, that just don't register no. in your mind, no. right? And that's the reason why many preachers, when they would preach, they would say, and she touched the robe or the gown of Yahshua's garment. You've heard that <laughs> preaching before, right? Now, I know it sounds funny, but 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 it's not. I mean, when you don't when you don't understand scripture Hebraically, you just you go for what you know. I've heard PhD ministers preach that and said that she touched the robe 
of Messiah's garment. And that's because in Western Christian thinking, the schools of theology have guided their ministers down a path that is not Hebraic. So when you're going down a pathway of thinking that is not Hebraic, you're not going to go look into the Hebraic culture to pull that information out. You know, terminology, ways of teaching are done in such a way to steer a person down a particular path. All right? So this is important. But when we look at this thing and we look at the Greek word, the Greek word is Kraspadon. Now, I did this study over 25 years ago. And when I saw this, I was like, I was like in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? You translators have got to be kidding me. It's like, how do you get, how do you get him from Craspadon? When Craspadon is a tassel. How do you how do you miss that? <laughs> so let's let's bring it into the proper scope. All right. So the woman that had this hemorrhaging of blood for 12 years, she saw Yahshua wearing his tallit, the garment, mm -hmm. and the hem or the craspadon, the tassel that was on his garment, is what she went to grab. Now I just talked about, a little earlier, I talked about healing in his wings, right? Here's the wing. Here's the wing, the corner, right? Here's the zit zit, the tassel that represents the commandment, the covenant. Where is the healing? It's in the covenant. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. Yes, the sir. healing is in the covenant. Now, every Israelite knew that. That wasn't, that wasn't like new revelation on the scene. Okay? That was like a given. They knew what the zit zit represented they knew what it meant and now this woman that had this hemorrhaging problem she sees Yahshua and she believes that he is the son of Dawid the Mashiach so quite naturally in her mind she's thinking just as the text says now, if I could just go ahead and touch that talit he's wearing I'm going to be all good they knew what the Talit represented because of it having the Zit Zit attached to it. And it says that she went for what? The tassel. This is what she went for. She went for the tassel. It says him in the King James Version, but it's a tassel. Kraspadon in Greek is Zit Zit in Hebrew. It's a tassel. She went for this. This is what she went for. She went to grab this. She knew that if she would just grab this, she didn't have to stop him. She felt like, I don't have to stop him. I don't have to get his attention. All I need to do is touch this that's on him. That's all I need to do. Because she already had an understanding. Healing his wings. They knew the scriptures. Healing in the wing. Healing in the wing. Y'all hear that? Yes, sir. Son of righteousness. Having what? Healing. In his wings, these are the wings. Kind of folk. The healing is the covenant. They they knew that already. And what happened to her? She received healing, right? All right. I'm just going to move through real quickly and wrap this up. There's two other individuals that we see here that also wore tallits. We have Kepha and Paul. To, see, when we understand that the tallit is, is the cloak or the mantle or the garment, when we read in scripture, we immediately recognize that, oh, okay, you guys are wearing the tallit. You're wearing the garment that has the seat seat on it. Y'all still doing this. After Mashiach died and rose and went, sit on the right hand of the Father, they're still wearing tallit with seat seat. They didn't stop wearing to leave with Zit Zit. Am I kind of getting my point across here a little bit? Yes. Acts chapter 12, verse 8. It says, this, and this passage deals with when the angel came in and uh, uh, got Kepha out of prison, Peter out of prison. 
It says, Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. I read that again. Put on your clothes and sandals. Put on your clothes and sandals and wrap your cloak around you. Everybody catch that imagery? Peter had it to me. All right? Angel told him, get your clothes on, get your sandals on, and wrap your teeth around you. We about to get out of this prison. All right? Mm -hmm. We have an instance with the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul wore to leave. You read over in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. And the Apostle Paul is given instructions because he left his Talit and he had left some scrolls and other items. It appears that he had left some scripture text somewhere. Anyway, the text says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, listen to this. It says, when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. So he was given some instructions about, you, you know how we do sometimes, you know, I might, <laughs> I might, I always leave my to leave here, you know, and, uh, you know, it's like me, it's like me making a phone call to Brother Daweed, okay, I'm at home, I make a phone call to Brother Daweed because I need my to leave and I need, I need to enter linear Greek text right here, all right, and it's like, I make a phone call to Brother Dawe, I send a text message to you, and I say, Brother Dawe, uh, can you go to the sanctuary? Go to the sanctuary for me and pick up pick up my talit and the interlinear Greek text, because I'm going to come by your house and pick that up. I got an engagement that I'm going to be going to up in Seattle. You, you know what I mean? I'm telling you, to, you know, this is what Paul is doing. He said, you know, hey, I left my cloak here and my parchments, my scrolls, all right? Bring that to me. No, that's all he's saying. But the point of the matter is that Paul wore a tulip. The apostles still wore the tulip. The imagery that we get when we look at the scripture is that the servants of Elohim did not cease in continuing to carry out the obedience to the details of the faith. And this is important. We see this when we go through the scriptures. But also, it's important for us to have all this imagery because as we see different views, expressions, and interpretations of scripture, what happens is when you deviate or you teach something that does not reflect what the Hebrew presents, people get a different image. You know, and I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to wrap this up. I was um, at Walmart, uh, and this was probably about maybe a couple years ago, and I ran into a Hebrew Israelite sister and um, she saw my ZZ and she said oh you wear you wear the ZZ like the Jews do referring to the Ashkenazi Jews because there, there are uh, you know many um, Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters that um, have, a, have a distaste for Ashkenazi Jews and rabbinic Judaism and I didn't go into any details about anything but because I had you know I had had it like this she said oh you wear it like the Jews do because in their particular uh, uh, group or camp they wear the fringes as going all around the border 
and a blue ribbon around the edge with fringes hanging all around. And, and so what I discovered is that because there are those who have this distaste, dislike, uh, hatred, whatever it is, towards uh, Ashkenazi Jews, and rabbinic Judaism, they tend to want to do everything the opposite or everything different. And you cannot throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, there's a, there, there's a whole lot of things that I have issue with with rabbinic Judaism that I don't agree with, but I'm not going to throw away the wearing of the talif because the talif that they wear is a representation of the talif that's noted in the text of the Torah. Except they don't put the blue string on. That's about the only thing. But the thing about it is there are those who feel like, well, I don't agree with them. I don't like them. And I don't, I consider them to be fake Jews. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Yo, you, you know, we're not going to call people fake Jews. We're not going to do that kind of thing. Not here. You know. So the thing that I want to convey is that everything that we do must be consistent with the proper Biblical Hebraic representation. And this is what's important. And there are many who are going off on a tangent because they have a particular prejudice. And that's the basis for it. And we should never make decisions or do things different because we have a prejudice towards something. Everything we do should be based upon what Torah says. And if Torah is not carried out properly, then make a change. Mm -hmm. Or if something is done and it is just a tradition without any uh, proper Torah-based foundation, then do something a little different if that's what you choose to do. But to try and state that something which is done according to the scripture is to be reinterpreted because it is somewhat attached to a particular branch of the Israelite faith, that's inappropriate to do. And so as we have looked at the Talith and Zitzit and hopefully have a balanced understanding of the wearing of them, the Zitzit, and the Talith, the purpose behind it. Hopefully, it would guide us and, and, and hopefully it would help us not to make a hobby horse out of something that the Almighty uh, didn't intend in the first place. Because he gave us these instructions for one purpose and one purpose only. I want you to catch this. He gave it to us for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is that we look at it to remember the commandments. He didn't give it to us so that we, we'd wrap our heads a certain way when we're in the service. You know how, you know, how, you know in, in rabbinic Judaism, you know, you wrap your head in it. There's, there's nothing in the scripture that says that you put the tenith over your head. Mm. Nothing in the text of scripture that says that all of that is rabbinic tradition. Nothing in the text that says you got to wear it a certain way, you got to flip it a certain way so that your tassel is this way and the others are in the back. That's rabbinic tradition. There's nothing in Torah that says anything about how you wear it, how it's supposed to be designed. There's nothing in the scripture that says only the man can wear it and the woman can't wear it. There's nothing in the scripture that says that. Sir. You understand that? Yes, sir. That's rabbinic tradition. The purpose, the purpose is that you look at this zit zit and remember the commandments. 
that you look at this zitzit and remember the covenant. That you look at this zitzit and remember everything that the Most High has given to you and has blessed you with. That's the purpose of it. Everything else is all tradition. And as we grow in our faith, it's important for us, Zion, not to get caught up in all of the other things that can become nonsense and have nothing to do with the original intent and purpose of Elohim. Bless the Almighty. But let's, in our walk and in our life, appreciate this reminder that Elohim has given to us because he's given it to us because he wants us to stay in a blessed position. Yes. Hallelujah. And if we remind ourselves, hey, let's be obedient to the Father. Mm -hmm. Let's show the Father we love him. You know, when life goes to tripping, you know, sometimes I look at my ZZ, you know, my, my thoughts in my mind, somebody say something to me, I look at ZZ, you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, thank you, Father. <laughs> I, or, or I'll have to repent. <laughs> I've had to do that too sometimes. <laughs> it's a good reminder. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Almighty gave it to us for that purpose. Mm -hmm. To help us. And Zion, our desire for sharing this is so that we may have a balance in it all. And never deviate from the purpose yes, sir. and the intent of the Almighty. Let us pray. Abba Yah, we bless you and we thank you for your mercies and your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for giving us the zitzi to remind us of your commandments that we may remember the covenant and the blessings contained in it. We thank you for what it represents and how it enhances our lives. I pray, Father, bless your people. May they have a balance in everything that they do and in their understanding of what the zitzit and the talith represent. We pray that you would touch lives, touch hearts. May they know that through you there is deliverance, there is healing, mm -hmm. there is shalom. And we bless you for that. May those who are not believers come to faith. May they turn in repentance and find the hope that they can have in the Messiah. We thank you tonight. In the mighty name of Yahshua, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, for those who joined us by live stream, we thank you for your participation and we thank you for staying online with us. We went a little longer tonight than we normally would, but uh, we were led to share some things with regard to the Talit. And I hope that each one of you have been blessed and encouraged and that most of all, you learned something about the purpose of the Talit. May the Most High bless you richly. If the Almighty touches you, to sow a seed into this ministry work, please go to our website at www.ncmmi.20m.com. Click the donate button and you can share whatever amount the Most High puts on your heart, or you could share by Cash App. Our Cash App code is dollar sign NCMMI. Again, we thank you for watching. Please join us when we meet for our Shabbat gathering on this Shabbat, this Saturday at 12.30 p.m. The Most High bless you and your families. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.